911, do you need police fire medical? My daughter's dead, she just hasn't gone in there. Sir, did she hang herself? No, she didn't hang herself, but the... How old is she? Her. Uh-huh, she's uh, 11 years old. Yeah, she was dead. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we have an intriguing and unforgettable crime case to discuss, the story of Amanda Cope. This complex case, which spans years of investigation, captivated the nation's attention and still raises questions to this day. So buckle up as we delve into the details of this enigmatic crime case. Residents of Rock Hill, South Carolina, witnessed a horrific crime when 12-year-old Amanda Cope was found brutally murdered inside her home. While the heinous nature of the crime shocked detectives, officers investigating the murder soon realized that the preteen had been sexually abused and even raped before the killer ended her life forever. Amanda Renee Cope was born on April 14, 1989 to Mary Sue Davis Cope and Billy Wayne Cope in Rock Hill, South Carolina. She was the oldest of three girls, with Jessica being the middle child and Kyla being the youngest. The seventh grader was described by her sisters as intelligent and loving. She had an unmatched passion for God and only wanted the best for the people around her. Her laugh was infectious and always put a smile on everyone's face. Amanda hoped that one day she would own a farm with horses. She dreamed of being a large animal veterinarian. In addition to her love for animals, Amanda was gifted with music. She had a beautiful singing voice and played the violin. Amanda's mother, Mary Sue, worked an overnight shift at a nearby factory and her father, Billy, worked part-time delivering chicken. Unfortunately, the money Mary Sue and Billy earned wasn't always enough to buy even the bare minimum. When first responders arrived at the Cope residence in Rock Hill, South Carolina, on November 29, 2001, they found 12-year-old Amanda Cope lying unresponsive on her bed. Incidentally, the victim was in a state of partial undress, and a part of her green blanket was wrapped tightly around her neck. A closer medical inspection also revealed a bite mark on her left chest, while an autopsy determined that the 12-year-old died after a person weighing over 300 pounds knelt on her chest and strangled her with a green blanket. When the police questioned Billy Cope, he insisted on his innocence and claimed that he was not involved with Amanda's death in any way. However, since there was enough evidence for an arrest, the police apprehended the father of three and he subsequently asked for a polygraph test. Interestingly, reports mentioned that Billy failed the polygraph test and apart from not being surprised at the results, Amanda's father finally decided to confess to the murder, claiming he assaulted her with a broom handle before strangling her to death. In the months that followed, Billy made two more written confessions to Amanda's murder although he believed that he was not in his senses when he killed the 12-year-old. In one instance, Billy claimed he had no idea Amanda was his daughter until after he had raped her, although in another confession, he admitted to arranging the crime scene and even blocking the doorway to Amanda's room so that her sisters wouldn't be able to discover the body. About 11 months after Amanda's murder, a man named James Edward Sanders was arrested on multiple counts of robbery and assault. During his arrest, the detectives swiped his DNA and realized it was a perfect match to the sample found on Amanda's body. Yet, despite the recent discovery, they brought the victim's mother, Mary Sue, to the station, who claimed that she had talked to her husband and was confident that he did not kill the 12-year-old. However, unwilling to believe Mary Sue, the detectives argued that the absence of any sign of forced entry proved that Billy was in cahoots with James Sanders and had allowed him into his home before letting him sexually assault and murder Amanda. Billy refuted this theory and insisted that he was not familiar with James Sanders. However, Mary Sue's friend, Amy Simmons, soon entered the scene and presented the police with a letter from Billy in which he had admitted to murdering Amanda. Unfortunately, the authenticity of the letter could not be determined, but it made detectives confident about Billy's involvement and they decided to take him, as well as James Sanders, to trial. When presented in court, both Billy and James pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. In fact, Billy even addressed his previous confessions and claimed the police coerced him to do so. Nevertheless, the jury believed otherwise and after a short trial, both suspects were convicted of two counts of first-degree criminal sexual conduct, along with a count each of murder, unlawful conduct towards a child, and criminal conspiracy to commit criminal sexual conduct. As a result, in 2002, a judge sentenced them to life in prison without parole, along with an additional 30-year sentence. Thus, with parole out of the picture, James is currently incarcerated at the Perry Corrections Department in Greenville County, South Carolina, while Billy breathed his last on February 9, 2017. 
We hope you find this story as riveting as we did. If you want to hear more about crime cases and incredible stories, be sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, stay safe and take care.